Oh, what a joke. We all want a six pack. Hey guys, I'm Ewan Matthews from uh, Zoma, and I'm here with Peter Farley, Pistol Pete, as you know him here. I'm just going to ask him a few questions from his experience of the first few months working with Zoma. You alright, Peter? I'm ready to go. Right, so the first question is before joining Zoma, what's the most unique or unusual project you've ever worked on as a graphic designer? Ooh, that's a tricky one. Um, I think I'd have to say um, I had the pleasure of being able to work on the COVID 19 on call for Ireland campaign. Um, so I would have designed the websites right. and the web pages um, for that particular project. So obviously, that was like a key core component of. The HSE's response to the COVID-19 pandemic so you know it's an a crazy experience to watch the amount of applications of you know all healthcare workers all over Ireland coming in you know putting their applications in wanting to support the country at their time of need and so yeah I think that would probably be my favorite one. And was that a difficult thing to do like setting up the website was it were you under some kind of time pressure? Time pressure, yes. Um, I'm sure you can probably. It was yeah. like very quick. They needed it as quick as possible. Yeah, I'm like I'm sure most people can remember the panics of the original lockdowns. It was kind of give or take in and around then. And uh, yeah, no, there was a lot of time constraints, and there was like even a tight, I guess, design scope to it. Right, mm -hmm. it wasn't like the most creative thing you've ever seen, but you could tell that there was a lot of meaning in the project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people yeah. needed it and they were using yeah. it and it was used yeah. by plenty of people. Yeah, yeah. So like in the graph design kind of thing, you didn't really have to do much creativity, but it was still one of the things that sticks out in your head. Oh, for like for sure, for sure. Yeah, look, it wasn't definitely wasn't the most creative moment of my career by far, but <laughs> <laughs> there is something special about it. I don't know. Have, it was, there was a higher purpose to that particular task. And right. I think that, that just... It makes you feel good at the end. I think. Right. Okay. Well, the next question is, Peter, what inspired your journey into graph design and what drew you to join the Zoma team? Ooh, well, so we'll go with what, why graph design in the first place. That's what what's the first thing is. Well, we'll drop some secrets here, some well-known secrets, I'm sure, among the town of Dundalk and Blackrock. Um, when I was a little bit younger, I used to have a YouTube channel. I think uh, I started probably way back in 2008. I was a child. Right. Doing it. Drop the tag. Is it still live? Is it? No, no. I will not drop the tag. It's gone over. <laughs> <laughs> you do not need to go here back. It started originally. Uh, I was like doing stop motion. You know the classic. Yeah, you know class. stop motion. It was with WWE figures at the time, so oh, it was right. incredible. And we escalated there to likes of gaming. Just, we did just about everything. It was real life videos right at the end. But like you obviously needed a very strong graphic design element to that, and when you're editing all these things, so like even as a child. The creativity was always there like that was just kind of i guess a way that i could outsource that creativity into okay. a special task and um, so yeah that's... and then from there did you go to college and do graphic design in college or no nope. <laughs> i didn't actually um, i went to college and i did history and politics and um, but there was a web design element of the course um, okay. and i fell in love with coding i mean like it wasn't a big part of our course at all, but I, I fell in love with it. And nearly all of the rest of my class didn't enjoy the course at all. Um, I got so bad again because I was the only one who loved coding that I was literally yeah. having everybody else in their course their through projects. their projects right at the end of the right. year. Okay. It was, I loved it that much. Um, so that's really where I got to utilize it in college. And then thankfully, you know, my dad owns a company and he gave me an opportunity when in the marketing department of one of his sub branches. And I was able to, I guess, nurture my skills and properly turn myself into a corporate graphic designer as well as being able to re being able to release that kind of creativity. Create of your own yeah. kind of style kind yeah. of stuff. But also it seen as your dad's company, you could kind of you had a wee bit of freedom with your designs and you'd come up with a few different things. Yeah. You weren't too afraid of like <laughs> I don't want to say but like disappointing your dad, but like I think coming up with a few different designs you could kind of go out there with as many ideas as you want, couldn't you? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. You have a free range yeah. to go. Yeah, and I've never been. Yeah. anything you want. And I've never been one to shy away from what you challenge, anyway. So yeah. I was there was many of designs I'm sure I put in front of my dad that were turned down, but uh, it was all part of the learning curve. Right. <laughs> so Peter, the second part of that question: What drew you to Zoma team? What drew you to submit that CV to us? Come in, talk to David, talk to Chris, talk, talk to Richie, and join the team. Well, that's easy. It was the money. <laughs> <laughs> what what, what made the right fit for you? What what what? Oh no! Start that, that question. Start the question. Start the question again. <laughs> Cut that out. Right, okay. Just power hungry. <laughs> okay, let's, let's start again, right? Okay. That's 
stay in bed. Okay. <laughs> right. Ready? Compose yourself. Compose yourself. Right. Oh, I had to drop that in. It was too easy. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get that in the blue. Right? Oh, it's all about the money. Right. Peter, what drew you to Zoma? Um, well, the first I heard about Zoma was, jeez, it must have been three, four years ago. Um, one of my neighbours, uh, James, who was formerly with Zoma, um, he was working in here. So I kind of got exposed to their, I guess, social media platforms, started following the page, see what was going on. Um, I was obviously working in a marketing team at that point, so it was always nice to see what a marketing agency was getting up to in Dundalk. But there was something different. There was just something different about Zoma that... I don't know, you don't really see it anywhere else. Right. There just felt like there was a different culture. There felt like there was a, an incredible intense energy about the place as well. There was just something very magnetic about it, even its appearance on social media, the awards it was picking up. Um, but it was like for me, and I think this would run true for a lot of creatives, you know, we kind of find ourselves like mellowed into these corporate positions you know where like i was wearing a shirt and tie into work you know most days and, office, yeah uh, and it just didn't feel right it felt like that it just felt like that was putting a uniform on creativity which i would never have time for and when i saw that there was a place like Zoma, even as simple as down to little things so like being able to wear whatever you wanted um, and of course the big fitness culture they have within here like of course then you're of course you'd be interested in joining a yeah. place like that but then on top of it you're seeing the work that's coming out of it, mm. right? And you're seeing these big brands they're working with, you're seeing incredible designers, um, incredible websites being made, and you're kind of going, well, I want to be part of that. Yeah. Something that's different. Like one of the drawbacks, I guess, of working for a single company, as in like a corporate company, is you're stuck on their, I guess, mission, the way they uniform their designs, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And with Zoma, you could come in here, you get to work with thousands of different clients. Every day is never the same, yeah. right? And I know that's such and a cliche. Every product is different. Yeah. You get to test yeah. all your different creative skills, different techniques, try out new uh, ways of designing logos, uh, ads, any graphics at all. You just get to try it, trial and error. I know for myself, I get to do different types of websites the whole time. I get to do maybe a logistics company one day, then a solicitor, then a food, like a restaurant or something like that. I think that's brilliant because if I was, I think uh, if I was doing the one project or the one type of industry the whole time, I don't know about you, but I get bored <laughs> of it. And that's the one thing I love about Loma is that I get to go into all of these different industries and test it all out and put my own spin on all that. Yeah. So it's probably the same for you. Oh, no, and the exact same. And then probably something that I hadn't anticipated before I joined Loma was like, I knew there was a good friendly culture in here, but it's different, right? You know. Uh, I remember when I posted that I uh, joined uh, Zoom on LinkedIn, I'd said it's a new place to call home. Yeah. Because there's such a family culture in here. You do feel like there's a, I don't know, with the lads, certainly there's like a, like a brotherhood, but it's just, you do feel like there's just this family culture. And then even it extends just beyond the employees, right? Like the partners are all involved as well, as in like the employees, partners. And there's just that kind of family culture and you're kind of going in you feel like part this seriously part of the team and yeah, I think yeah, that's sure. that's make or break. And all these events that we do together are like going to Fred's on Wednesday, is that all? <laughs> I know it's tough but it is team building and it does kind of bring you closer together. It is tough but it does bring you closer together and then sure gym every every evening or all that kind of stuff that's that's all what makes it kind of better and a better work environment and a better work environment makes better projects and no. get more creativity from that kind of free open kind of environment that we have here in Zoma. Oh, for yeah. sure, for sure. Um, <clears throat> all right, okay, next question. Looking back on your uh, graphic design career, what specific skills or experiences do you bring to Zoma and how do you think they'll contribute to your projects? Oof. Um, definitely working in the corporate space has definitely made me more process orientated, which is a big help. Um, you know, Zoma's in this growth phase, but I think I've had the luxury of working with all different sizes of companies that I can see that as a company can grow, um, it certainly can have, I guess, growing pains, right? It's natural enough. It's more like process has just become a little bit more under the cosh as there's more people joining the team. And um, so I would have experienced in like previous employment teams, my teams like growing rapidly mm. um, and being able to make that as seamless as possible. So like there's traits 
within that you know you can call it whatever you want to be it could be being organized there is an element of leadership there as well nurturing you know new talent to come in and then fully release you know their potential really i think that's one of the big things that i would have learned throughout my career is like i would have got very frustrated if i did not see the potential in someone come to fruition so i worked really hard on making sure that people felt in a welcome because as soon as someone comes into a company settles and then feels comfortable they're let off the leash and they can be in they can and probably will do incredible things yeah. um, and i think that's kind of that's a big part of it and i know that's not necessarily directly related to say my graphic design work right it's like a separate skill you know you don't need leadership to, to design a good graphic or anything like that but um, everything around that it's yeah. all like managing projects but, getting things done for a deadline that's all you need all those skills for sure yeah and i i think it, when it comes to the creative space it's like you know if you get past this an interview you hand in your cv and you get the job right people know you're creative you're creative like that's pretty much guaranteed it's a mm -hmm. given so it's then working on the outer layers i guess of your work experience that you're trying to nurture for people to fully release it it's like when you hire a graphic designer you know they're talented they're a graphic designer you're most likely have seen the work so then it's about well we have their work we know they're talented so what can we put in place to make sure that we release the full potential these guys are capable of and i think that's kind of the skills i would bring to the table right peter one more question how has working with other designers influenced your approach Right, and what notable outcomes have emerged from the teamwork? What has it been being in this kind of creative space? You have everyone here is quite creative in their own way. Most of us are designers. How has that influenced the way that you go about work and kind of targeting your, the projects that you're assigned? Hmm, I think in like the creative process there's always a part where you hit kind of a creative block right particularly yeah. if any projects any really length of time and i do mean that by even just a couple of hours and i think one of the greatest things in here is the ability to go i'm stuck um oh chris is sitting over there chris can you come over here look at that and chris will come over and go oh yeah you could try this 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 is this and all of a sudden you're out of that block and you're flying a million miles an hour again yeah. and i think that's when you have like expertise everywhere around you you know you don't find yourself kind of falling into those creative blocks as much you're able to get out a lot quicker um but it's also what it i love off each other. You can, like, yeah it, it improves your work because like you do have your own ideas and your own kind of style they have but then you can go you can go to like chris or david or richie and see which one uh, what they think and they might have better ideas or well, not better ideas but different ways of thinking of the design that you're going after and maybe they have a wee more experience and they know what works and what doesn't work so it's nice to kind of bounce off them and get their opinion on certain projects isn't it yeah but it's more than that like what i love is like none of us in here have the same vision hmm. like we all look at the world nearly completely differently and and i mean that like in the creative process as well so like if i'm asking chris or richie or even you yourself like you're never going to come back with the exact same answer that I had for say a, a problem. Um, so I think that that like, it's just, you know, you can't put a value on that. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's such a, and then what I love here is like, there's a quite an open atmosphere as well that people voice their opinions, which yeah. is so important. Like, and you know, sometimes you work in places and you know, people might have a thought, but they kind of keep it to themselves. And yeah. then it's like, Oh no, but here it's like, we say it as it is not like in a rude way or anything like that but it just means that at the end of the design it's probably five times better than it was before because three different people have looked at it from three different perspectives yeah, okay, and now you've got a design which is much more catered to i know you say a wide spectrum of audience yeah, yeah, yeah. it works for everyone's kind of outlook on it and they, it kind of improves it all in yeah the end. Uh, yeah for sure uh, that's why here in Dublin, like that's why we have like these open plan offices where you don't have someone in their own office or you well you can go <laughs> off if you want to have your own uh, a little time yourself you can do that there is space but there is a, we all generally work in the open open office space upstairs all together that we can just turn around if we want to ask one of the lads a quick, quick question you don't feel like you're annoying them whereas in some co other companies i know you kind of are afraid sometimes to ask your boss a question or ask someone <laughs> above you a question and you'd be afraid they'd be too busy to kind of answer the question or kind of help you out a wee bit but it just doesn't seem like that here doesn't it no no
Um, and the lads are very good for that. Uh, but <laughs> any surprises or standout moments in the last three months working with Soma that you didn't anticipate? Oh, surprising moments. <laughs> Just one, a moment that stood out. Like, there's been a lot, since you started, there's been a lot of things happening. We've opened the new offices here in Dundalk. We've had, uh, <laughs> I don't know what else. <laughs> 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 it just got black there. But yeah, we have lots of things that happen. We've obviously moved in. We have loads of uh, new clients coming on board. Obviously, you lots of uh, projects you've been handed. Uh, you've been. I I noticed your work has been massive amount of work being handed to you. So, like, what what stands out to you? That ah, oh, I mean, easily, easily. We went to the Loud Business Awards. I'm only in the job maybe 20, 30 days, um, yeah. and and uh, Soma won loud business of the year and I mean it doesn't get any bigger than that it was funny I remember the exact moment when the award was about to be read out there was lads organizing a round, round of drinks, drinks at the bar table <laughs> but I remember also saying because David and Fiona were sitting there beside me and I remember saying oh there's one award left and it was like oh loud business of the year award. and I just remember saying you know you never know you never know but there was just an energy that night you felt like we were unstoppable that night so I think that was definitely my favorite moment because in my head, at least, it's kind of like justified, you know, the career move. And, you know, it just felt like, yes, I've joined the right rocket ship here. <laughs> of course, yeah. Right, thank you for listening. This is me and Pete. Or oh, Peter. Whatever you're doing. <laughs> this is Pete. Uh, and we'll get on to more, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> that ending could be tragic. Yeah, oh. oh, God. <laughs> that was terrible. Alright, go again. Oh! <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. Pistol Pete, or Peter Farrell. Oh! Oh! <laughs> um, we're here. Start again! Yeah, yeah. start again! That's so good, Bridget, you fucking all up. Wait. <coughs> How you doing? I'm Ewan from Zoma. Hey, you start uh, again. You're caught as soon as you started. Sorry, sorry, okay. Please. <coughs> right. To be. Um, during the COVID-19 yeah. pandemic, um, we, no, hold on, that's a tricky question, man. That's a tricky question. No, look, it wasn't as corporate-y, you know, they understood kind of the dress code was, could be, you're after losing that line there, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Go <laughs> How has working with other designers influenced your approach and what notable Stop, output? that light's going off again, God, no. <laughs> I know. So don't want to ruin your setting. 